lives in the streaming world of what he believes to be of quality. But there is, unseen by most, an episodic horror-based TV show. A show that still holds up. A show called Tales from the Dark Side. I thought you said you used it for storage. Oh, well, I do my knitting in there. I guess I left the light on. Oh, hurry up and get into your room. It's, you're, it's cold out here. You're all wet. Good night, Mother. Good night. Welcome back to Talks from the Dark Side, the podcast where we talk about tales from the dark side created by Richard Rubenstein and George Romero. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. Today we're talking about The Shrine, directed by Christopher Welch, written by Pamela Sargent and Jules Shelbo, with an original air date of February 9th, 1986. So we're back with another uh, spooky-ish episode? I think it's pretty damn spooky. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) You don't think it's creepy? Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, I do. I I do. I think it's man out on this one, (laughs) but okay. Well, I know where you're coming from, because I... We'll get there. Yeah. We always do, but... To set it up, it's like, we get there eventually? We get there eventually. Yeah, no, I guess you guys are not wrong. I'm just kind of thinking about the overall episode, yeah. but... Uh, it is a, I should note, it is a slow eventually. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is a 22-minute <laughs> slow eventually, yes. This yeah. is this is 21 more, minutes, maybe. This is more like a psychological thriller. Yeah. Uh, supernatural thriller, mm-hmm. I, as, yeah. you know, I would I would say. But it yeah. also has to do with, exist- you know, the existentialism and, and uh, relationships between you and your parents and things like that. There's a a lot going on there's here. There's a lot going it's, on here. Uh, it is actually like the, the subject matter is pretty heavy when yep. you actually start picking it apart. You're right. And then shifting it into it with a, with a paranormal spin on it. Which is always nice. Which we is always great. appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, there's yeah. some really there's some really fun stuff here, but I don't really want to get too deep into it until like the end. Yep. Um, that way we can discuss it then. Sure. So uh so yeah, before we get started, uh Chris, you want to do that Fangoria synopsis for us, please? Yeah. So uh our official synopsis from the Fangoria episode guide says Christine, a neurotic twenty eight year old, returns home for the first time in five years to confront her mother. The prodigal daughter's worst fears are confirmed when she finds that a spectral moppet has moved into her room and taken over her mom's affections. Spectral moppets, a, a, a weird way to yeah. put that. Moppet. Do they like mean Muppet? to say Muppet? But know. then it's not really, uh, yeah, I it's, don't know what that is. Is a Muppet means. a thing? Is that like if we look up in the dictionary, is that like some kind of like haint or ghoul or something, like a specific type? Is that a poppet? Like well, a, uh, haint, poppet, yeah. a haint is the in-between area. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, the taint, yeah, wow. It's somewhere yeah. in between haunt and, uh, uh, yeah. The the word I would use is tulpa. Um, yeah, uh, tulpa more so, tulpa, yeah. Tulpa, you know, I'll get more into that as as we uh, as we talk about this episode. So a moppet, actually, I, I did pull it up. It says a small, endearingly sweet child. So that is what it is, All yeah. Right. Replaced with a kid. S- spectral moppet, exactly. Oh. No. Why don't they just say kid? Spectral child. Because they're being flowery in their yeah. language. <laughs> they're trying to use Come a five uh, We don't look up words. what it meant. Uh, actually, it's six years, <laughs> not five. Uh, we we <laughs> did the work of the comments section. Yes, yeah, so. so there you go. So yeah, we get Colleen Gray in this episode, and she plays Cecilia Matthews, who is this mother overbearing, question mark, maybe, sort of? Checked out. Checked out. <laughs> definitely well, checked well, out. Well, definitely now. Um... Just real quick, she was a she was a big TV actress. Uh, she did, she's done a ton of stuff, but I just wanted to note that she was part of Alfred Hitchcock Presents, which okay. is another anthology television show. So usually, it's, there you usually go. it's just monsters episodes, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> lest we forget, there was not just one of these shows running at a time. This was a very popular genre, especially yeah. in the eighties. Uh, there was a lot happening, like you guys just said. I mean, there's even, we've mentioned it before, other shows that came later, like Masters of Horror, and uh, was that the Steven Spielberg one, or was there another one even of that? I'm Amazing thinking. Stories. Amazing. Yep. There's so many. There's so many anthology Outer series. Limits, yeah. Twilight Zone. Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Night Gallery yep. is yeah. one I want to yeah. cover. 
I wonder if she did all of them. Right, <laughs> that yeah. was the point of bringing that up. Every Twilight Zone reboot. Yeah, she's on each the one. The 80s one. The, oh, there's one with like the corn intro song. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. There's no. Where like, like Jonathan yep. Davis of corn did like the <laughs> intro. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. But just with like the Sweet. eye and like the door in the background. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> Trash. Don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're good. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, look it up. <laughs> I believe yeah, it. There's a clip going yeah. in. You know and there I is. Think, um, I think Forrest Whitaker did like, he was like the Rod Serling. Uh, exactly, he was. Yeah. The so 90s. when you hear corn, <laughs> the 90s version, yeah. You were about to enter a Submit place. For, of... <laughs> Submit for your approval. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Are you afraid of the dark? That's another oh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, we have this mother, and then we also have this daughter, uh, played by Lorna Luft. Who, her name is Christine or Chrissy. Um, she was also uh, part of an anthology television show, the 80s Twilight Zone. She was in okay. a bunch of. So, uh, Christine um, hasn't seen, hasn't been home in six years. Wait, for a second. Let's go back. You said she's 28. Yeah. You sure? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. The, 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 Do you think she looks older or younger? She's not 28. No. <laughs> I mean, she's like 32. Right? What do you does, think? I don't know. I don't know. It's hard Up, to judge. Little, I don't know. Yeah. She does look more like early 30s, but now you're kind of splitting hairs. I was kind of more shocked <laughs> to hear that she was 28 because the way they set this up, I just assumed she left after high school, but there was actually a few years before that that she was still around, that she was just hanging out in this room with all this kitty shit. Like, that yeah. That kind of confuses me. I just but. mean, it's like they said, it, like in the thing, it's like she's 28. It's like, no, she's not. Get, the, get uh, out of here. It, nah, I don't even know if that, they even say it in I don't know if that, I don't even know if that lines up for like Sean just said, like I'm after to, the high yeah. school, like between uh, that time, I guess four years of college, you went away, maybe. But you're 18, and I, I, everyone's different. I guess yeah, some people yeah. keep their old shit forever. I don't right. Know. Well, well, well. It's they're been, stuffed animals. It's well, it's like Twilight Zone episodes. You see where the guy's like 40, yeah, yeah. or guys like 25, and it's, it looks like he's like <laughs> 55. Yeah. Just I guess I guess it's a you know how that that's, that's it's right. it makes me feel better about myself. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. It's also like you know. I forget if we were talking about this on the last episode or if it was off the air, but it's like they film so many of these fucking episodes. Sometimes it's like well, we have a role. This person's good for it. Let's exactly. not overthink yeah. the semantics. Yeah. Right. So uh, Christine has come back uh, after six years. Now, six years ago, she had uh, a, what she calls a breakdown that she mentions, and she's kind of become estranged from her mother. The way that this is, I, I feel like. It'd be beneficial for this episode specifically because there's a lot of visual storytelling um, in the way this kind of goes down. So if we kind of front load it with the problem, then we can kind of go through the episode. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. it does. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so yeah. So she had a breakdown. She was, she, uh, she's been estranged from her mother for, for six years. And basically, she was one of those uh, trophy not trophy kids, excuse me. Um, well, that's fair to say. A trophy kid? Yeah, yeah no, yeah. she is a little bit. She's, it's not. She's not like a prize, but she's like she's like the the golden child in terms of like she's getting all the diplomas, she's getting straight A's, she's she's doing cheerleading, she's getting all the the trophies, she's getting all the ribbons, the gold medals. Yeah, she's she, pleasing she, her parents and not caring about herself is the implication. She's yeah. the homecoming queen, only yeah. seventeen. Make you know? your parents proud, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and that I guess that was too much for her. Mm-hmm. And the the pressure to be this great person in life, I guess. And then she broke, and then she's become estranged from her mother. So fast forward, she's lost her husband or her boyfriend or whomever. She right. does. Your she's boyfriend, she's yeah. outdoors. She, I don't think she's got a good living situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so now she's coming back to kind of move in with her mom for a little while. For an indistinguished amount of time, she's just like knocking on the door in yeah. the middle of the night, and mom's even like, "What the fuck?" Like she expects her, but even still, is like, "What the fuck?" She, and like, she like lets herself in. She's like, "Mom, didn't you hear me yelling?" She's like, eh, "I mean, I made tea. It's cold." <laughs> She, Thanks for coming by after six years. She, she's really snide about like uh, I mean oh, six you're, you're, fucking years. Yeah, but she's really snide about like oh you're late. Yeah, oh, the tea's cold because you're late. You're still you know I stayed up, but you're late anyway. Well, like there's yeah. some deep seated shit there. Yeah, is what yeah. you're saying, yeah. And it, you could feel it too because this whole scene is like just awkward as hell. Yeah, just it's so palpable, uncomfortable. Man. It's like yeah. are they supposed to be mother daughter? It's like because this is like just uncomfortable. It's like their first conversation yeah. feels like mm-hmm. ever. There's no warm welcome. It's like it's like okay, you're here. Uh, do you want this thing I made you? You want some milk or something? Okay, I'm going to bed. Bye. Also, by the way, don't go in your bedroom. <laughs> Nothing yeah. really to think about. I just sew in there. It's my sewing room. Yeah, she yeah. said. She's like, oh, I made up the guest room for you. And she's like, the yeah. guest room. She's like, yeah, uh, I'm using your room for storage. Yeah, it's like, why well, want to just go in my old room? It's oh, it's storage now. It's like, don't bother. It's like it's <laughs> okay. full of uh, my old knitting stuff. Whatever. 
<laughs> uh, right off the bat, and I do appreciate Tails for doing this, kind of instantly throwing that carrot at us. We get this shot of her, like, seeing, like, okay, this is a little odd as the camera pans to the bottom of the door frame that is now lighting up, and you're hearing a child saying, three blind mice, three blind... I'm like, what the fuck are we... Like, I'm, I guess yeah. they kind of hooked me on some level, but I'm like, what are we doing? Well, it, it's also that thing where you got to tell the whole story in 22 minutes, yep. and yeah. they do a pretty good job of, like being able to build that tension, but they have to be like, okay, this is the fucking deal, basically. Yeah, you know it's like I mean? not wasting any time. It's like yeah. they know they only have a limited amount of time. But also, too, right before, you know, the light turns on mm -hmm. and under the door and you hear the singing, the, like, window upstairs is blown open. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And there's, like, just wind coming through. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's, like, made to point it out mm -hmm. where it's, like, there's enough of, like, a scene around it where it's, yeah. like, oh, let me close that. Oh, the, and it's just, kind of weird is that like a weird i don't know if this is what you're implying chris but like is that supposed to be like the spirit or the mop it that it's coming in kind of i mean it's just creepy either way with the wind blowing through the hallway but yeah it's like i don't know what they're trying to imply but it's like why even bother having yeah. because that the fact of the matter is none of the windows are ever open when the wind blows yeah that's the creepy part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's one point. of my favorite yeah. gags. Yeah. It, it's it's just like uh, from the I'll Give You a Million episode uh, when dude like gets up and there, there's like a ghostly presence and, it, and the wind's blowing. He's like, I got to shut that damn window that's and right. it's closed. There's nothing. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love that. And right, he turns and the guy's there with the candle or whatever the hell it is. Oh, his soul. He's his like, soul. you got to give it back to me. Anyway, so she wakes up in the morning. Uh, Christine wakes up in the morning and she's just waking up and she's all groggy and she hears <laughs> across the room or across the hallway in her old room, this little girl like laughing and talking to her mother and her mother's going shh quiet, quiet. Yeah. and you're like what the fuck she scurries out of the room with like the sewing needle and some yarn like oh I was sewing and then she like quickly closes the door and her daughter's like yeah but I heard voices oh it's the radio I had the radio yeah, on she's being like real secretive about it and, yeah. but she's still sort of like being distant to her daughter. Yeah, I'm like sitting there like, okay, well, what could it possibly be? Fairies. I, I'm thinking ghosts again. You don't really know yet. It's some kind of little kid something. She's yeah. knitting a giant version of her daughter. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like uh, Wicker Man style. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and some Andre Toulon right? shit, dude. Yeah. Her mother's like, oh, I'm just knitting. I'm going to go make you breakfast. See ya. She ends up opening the door mm. and all her stuff is still there. And she's like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's like she never left. Yeah, but it's like, mom said this was for storage. Yeah, there's not, there's storage. no boxes or anything. Yeah, yeah. There is not a thing out of place. All of her awards are there. All of her her uh, photos, affects, and, and yeah. her ribbons and her pictures and all that stuff of her like as like a the cheerleading head of the cheerleading squad and the homecoming queen and the diplomas and the ribbons and all that shit's still there. I thought it was funny. There's like a flag, like a pendant on the like the wall. Yeah, it just says township high. Just some yeah. like, just like, might as well say like sports team. Well, Township USA, yeah. the most generic yeah. thing possible, right? Yeah, but yeah, she is kind of scanning everything, and now it's like, now I'm really confused. I'm as confused as the character, which is the point. And she's just like, huh, okay, uh, let me put this picture down. She's like, you know, memory, you know, reminding herself back to old memories, good and bad. Again, maybe I'm hung up on this, but 18, still hanging out in this baby room, but whatever. Uh, and then she kind of joins her mother for breakfast, kind of confused, but not ready to really bring it up yet. But also, the we get another shot here of the wind blowing again through this window. Oh, yeah, yeah. When it happens, it just happens again. She ends up uh, picking her diary up, mm -hmm. and, that, yeah. and that like triggers her along with all the other stuff in the room. But yeah, the wind blows behind her, and the fucking window's closed, and you're like, yeah. what the f what's going on here? Yeah. So she goes downstairs for breakfast, and she confronts her mom, and she's like, you know, what's up with the room? Like, you left all my stuff in there, and what happened? I thought you were redoing in the house she's like well i'm going one room at a time you yeah. know she just kind of just like passes like plays it off totally nothing. passive about yeah. it like it's not weird it's fine don't it's worry like, about oh well it. what about the voice i heard oh just the radio yeah the radio it didn't it's sound like, like the radio mom? mom what is what is she up to <laughs> you're talking to it mom so christine's friend tony comes over and her short story is that like now she's selling like cosmetics or something and she's after high school or college she like ended up moving in back with her parents who live across the street and she could see her in her old bedroom. She can see across the street into Christine's bedroom. And when they were kids, they used to like have messages and yeah. stuff across right, the street. Yeah. And this part's where this whole interaction is just sort of like eerie. Yeah, it's because weird. Because at first they're like, oh, I haven't seen you forever. They like pull each other's mullets. Yeah. It's like, oh, that was yeah. kind of weird. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> like, pull your hair. <laughs> but they're, um, then it just gets weird because she's like, hey, uh, your mom's in your old room a lot. She's like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, the light's on all the time, yeah. you know? And she's like, I don't know. I guess she's just like really sad. Yeah. One thing that's just like, it's getting real awkward and they're just like talking about her mom being in her room. 
Then it's like real uncomfortable. They're both awkward. They're just kind of uh, like looking around the kitchen. Then they're like, hey, remember us remember- being cheerleaders? <laughs> yeah. Like just trying to connect. Out of nowhere. Well, yeah, I, it's, I think, it's weird. I, I think it's because- Who wrote this tripe? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's no, a good question. No, I, th- I think that, that that is intentional because it's like- Remember when you remember? Well, your mom's acting real weird. Remember when you had that breakdown? Oh yeah. And then it's like, oh, uh, so anyway, oh, remember like cheerleading? Yeah. It? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, remember <laughs> how we used to have fun? Remember the time we did the thing? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so she's like, "Oh, you got to come over tomorrow or whatever." Okay, bye. But she's like, "Well, I can't come tonight because my brother's visiting. Yeah. And I haven't seen him in forever." And I, I thought for like, I kept thinking it, even though I knew it wasn't him. I was like, "Is that Warner Shook?" And I'm like, no, it's not Warner Shook, Sean. It's yeah. not Warner Shook. Is that Warner Shook? It kind of looks like him. Maybe I'm crazy. But... A little, it looks a like bit. a Shook. Talks like a Shook. <laughs> he must, must be a Shook. shook. Yeah. He's a distant relative, yeah. obviously. <laughs> so so Chuck is there, and, and Mom like gives them cake and goes to bed or whatever. Oh, that cake looked really good. By oh, the way. yeah, big piece of chocolate cake. Chuck is like, you know, she's, she's really worried about you. And Christine's like, Mom doesn't care about me, blah, blah, blah. She's like, uh, ever since the breakdown, she, you know, she never g- forgave me for that. And she's like, uh, you know, I'm not married. I don't have a kid. I don't have a big house. And she hates me for that. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, it's fine. Don't, you, don't be worried about that. Yeah. And then he says, and this is sort of where it sets up kind of what's to come the rest of the episode more than kind of what we've been seeing so far. Yeah. Is, you know, she's explaining like why her mom doesn't like her. Because mm-hmm. she's like, I don't, I'm not married. don't have a house. don't have kids. And then he says, like, oh, well, that's okay. Everybody fails in some way. Yeah. Like, thanks, bruv. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the Nobody's same. perfect. And it's like, that kind of points out, like, the way this family is. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, that's what you need to accomplish to be, like, yeah. set. Or, like, that's what- I think what? a lot of families do that. Yeah. In some way, shape, or oh, form. Yeah. yeah, but I also kind of read it, because I felt the same way when they were saying that, what you guys just said. But also, like, she takes it in stride. Like, she doesn't take it that way at all. She's kind of like- Almost like, yeah, no, you're right. Like, but I agree with you guys. I was like, oh, that was kind of a shitty way to put that, but maybe that's just how it gets through her skull. Is like, yeah, it just is what it is. Kind of, yeah. kind of rise above it, and she kind of hugs him and is like, thanks for the advice, bro. Like, appreciate it. Yeah, he's trying to encourage her. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. you know, there, there's there's still clearly something that we need to patch up with mom still. Yeah, it's like, yeah, not everyone wants kids. It's like, and that's all right. Yeah, you know. She's also down and out too because she like broke up. She tells Tony that she like broke up with her yeah. husband. Like or her just boyfriend. didn't work out. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm a fucking loser basically. Yeah. So she's like being hard on herself and you know, Chuck's he's doing his best. Yeah. Not totally helping, I guess, but his trying, way of trying to do yeah. the big brother thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whatever. So then it's another hard cut where she's coming out of the shower and um she hears them them talking again in the room. She hears the little girl voice and her mom. This is where she opens the door and sees Oh yeah. The little girl on the bed with her mother, and they're like singing songs together, and she's just like having a fucking episode. Well, she doesn't see the face yet. She sees the back of the head, and she's like, "What the fuck?" And yeah. this is like, I do have to point out, this is like very effective. The way yeah. they shot this, the way you know the oh, yeah. actress did this, yeah, it's like this is like I like how they pulled it's this creepy off. as yep. hell, man. Very creepy. I think the cinematography on this episode in particular raises it up a level uh not to say the other episodes that isn't the case also but you're right like the way that this was laid out is very intentional mm-hmm. yeah and they, they use the budget really well mm-hmm. oh, yeah. in this one too so this is the part where mom goes out for the day and she like goes to town or whatever and christine's like okay mom see you later she immediately rushes upstairs goes into the room and she's like all right where the fuck are you and she's like looking through the closet and like yeah. ripping the clothes out and she's like i know you're here and she says if you don't show yourself, I'm going to take mommy away from here. Which is a very, like, strange thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like you know what's going on, but she's oh. also, yeah. like, having a break da- another breakdown. Right. The yeah. Kid, the kid shows up behind her and she goes, I won't let you. Just a total brat. And this fucking kid, and it's, a, it's herself, a little version of herself, like, as a kid, like, sitting in this rocking chair behind her. And they start, like, talking to each other. And he's, she's like, when you left, I came back. Mommy called out to me and I came to her. Yeah, and I mommy love Mommy wanted her. me, how she, I am. She doesn't love you anymore. She yeah. loves me. That is some deep seated dark shit. Dude. Like it's played up a little. I mean, it's pretty dark still in the episode, but the way that they present this child, this mop it, uh, is it's it's got kind of that mischievous, like evil intent, but in the sense of like, uh, how do I word this? Like a lot of times you see in fantasy in general, not necessarily always supernatural sense, but just kids in fantasy that are like, they're not bad. 
but they're also mischievous, so they might do a bad thing, if, yeah. even though they're not trying to be bad. In the, in the context of, like, this thing wants mom, it's going to do whatever it wants to have mom, it doesn't see anything wrong with it wanting mom, so what's the big deal? Yeah. While this woman's just like, I want my fucking mother back, like, what's going on? Yeah. If that all made sense. Well, now now, now the, 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 the Moppet's out of the bag, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so, Literally, yeah. so, uh, so I, with that being in the said, rocking chair, what do you got, girl? What do you got? <laughs> with that being said, this is totally like a tulpa. And what a tulpa yeah. is, if you don't know what that is, it's like when you concentrate so hard on something, your thought become gives, gets form. Mm-hmm. Yep. And like her sadness and mom's sadness and, and sorrow and regret and pain and anguish and stuff from losing her daughter or like having a fight with her daughter or whatever and how her daughter wasn't who she thought she was going to turn out to be um, kind of manifested itself. And she thought so hard and was hurt so much that she's manifested this being. Yeah. Which is creepy. Oh, yeah. And I love that motif in films, like, um, especially, I, you know, Trilogy of Terror 2 comes to mind with Bobby. Uh, yep, you're right. Also, uh, Evil Coop in uh, tw- the new Twin Peaks. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just, I think that's so cool. I mean, it's not necessarily like a demon or anything. No. Yeah. But it it can have malevolent intent, yeah. which exactly. we kind of get here. Especially as it goes on, yeah. there is more malevolent intent for sure. And this is great too because she like goes after her and she disappears, and then Christine's like, "Oh my god, I'm fucking cracking up!" And then the fucking thought form starts throwing shit around the room, and there's wind blowing and stuff. It's great. This it's whole, really great. This whole episode just like takes this total turn yeah. here. And the then mom comes back and here. then mom just comes in and walks in on her. Yeah, and, and Mom never really, up until the end of this episode, outside of the final thing that happens, is just acting like, this isn't a happening, this isn't a thing, my daughter's just, oh, she's just back, what's the big deal? Yeah. I have nothing else going on, like, what are you so upset about? And then Christine's like, Mom! Yeah. Like, literally, like you guys are saying, having another breakdown. Yeah, yeah and she's like, the, I mean, one, the mom is totally checked out, yeah. And when she comes in the room, she's like not paying attention to Christine. No. She, it's like you have Christine and then Chrissy. I think that's what they call her, right? Yes. Chrissy, yes. The little, the little girl. Yeah. So it's like you have like, you know, Christine's in the room, Chrissy. She's not even paying attention to yeah. like the adult version of her. They're no. singing like Frere Jacques together. Yeah. And this is, cr- it's like it's, they keep singing. And it keeps getting louder and louder. Yeah. And like even Christine like goes fucking crazy from it. Yeah. And she's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not ribbons. I'm not, I'm not diplomas. diplomas. I'm not yeah. trophies. I'm a person. She starts ripping everything off the and wall. And she's throwing fucking Knocks shit. horses off the yeah. wall. Yeah. And she's like, and she's like, we're going we're to remodel this whole room. We're going to throw it all out. We're going to start over. Well, while she's doing all that, mom is like droned out. Like, it, like you guys are saying, totally ignoring her, acting like she doesn't exist. Just like, yes, so, uh, Christy. Uh, She's just knitting. Yeah. Yeah. And Christine's just like, I'm a human being and I'm not perfect. Uh, yeah. yeah. And she sees little Chrissy in the mirror and she's like yelling at her and she's like, what are you going to be? <laughs> Miss Perfect. You're going to be Miss. What does she say? You're going to be Miss Know-It-All, Miss Popularity. Fuck you. And she like th- smashes the, the uh, mirror with like her like younger visage in it and it's like it's pretty powerful shit yeah there's a lot there's a lot here yeah Uh, which you think is like kind of gonna be the end of it but then you know you kind of get a little bit of a swerve here in the final moments where you're like oh shit the ghost or whatever you want to call the 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 topa is like all right, well, that was a nice try. Me and mom are getting the hell out of here. She's like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, you're not. She won't let go. The yeah. the, the the being like won't yeah. let go of her she's mom. Like, she's mine now. She yeah. loves me, not you. That's the malevolent part of it. That's where that's like kind of like demon-esque. It's like not the same thing like you're saying, but it g- gives you those vibes. Well, mom gets up and goes, Chrissy, we can go now. And she goes, yeah, and we'll never come back. And yeah, then Christine, brat. Yeah, yeah, Christine <laughs> like has her last... Um, her her last you know hurrah or her last you know uh, stand here yeah and then everything goes fucking crazy in the room that's right, that's and right. the windows start blowing out and everything's blowing yeah, yeah. over and it's all it's like chaos in this room it's like company of wolves at the end there. and she's right, like yeah. and she's like mom you know I love you I need you that's the thing I yeah. still I need you I still need you and then mom kind of like wakes up from this like hypnotized yeah, she state. snaps out of it a little yeah. bit and like finally sees her. Which yeah. he didn't like this whole time. Yeah. Just like wasn't paying attention. And, and then like they like touch hands and Chrissy's like, ah <laughs> like like she's been like defeated or yeah. something. Because mom faints. And there's like there's this, a weird white light washing it, like, over there's everything. There's a whole whiteout, dude, yeah. of like this little thought form or whatever, like dissipating or dying mm. or whatever. And there's like some weird shots too of like the close up in the girl's eyes that yeah. just sit like sit there for too long that just like Fade to white. She's screaming the whole yeah. time. Uh, 
I get what they're going for, yeah. and I have more to say in my final thought. But this part in particular, <laughs> I thought they were like, all right, this is a little too crazy. I understand they're trying to really make this moment very impactful with them touching hands, and mom finally snaps out of it. But just this girl screaming, I think, does not, for me at least, achieve what they were going for. It just becomes silly to me at that what point. Do you have, what's wrong with people screaming? <laughs> I just into can't a help but think of fucking Troll 2 <laughs> instantly. And I know that's like a shitty example because that's that's like me going for like the most obvious answer in the world of, oh my God, the guy from Troll 2. But like, I, yeah. that's what pops in my head is just an overreaction to the point of stupidity yeah. the uh, grandpa just, seth moment yeah, yeah, yeah i don't know it's like it's a little kid actor it's fine i'm overthinking it i understand that but it just took me out of it well with that being said i mean this this last part where she's like holding her mom i think is, is pretty yeah. heartfelt when she's like you know don't the, leave me well she thinks she's dying yeah, yeah and she yeah. like wakes up and she's like i'm here and that's how the episode ends mm-hmm. and i thought that was pretty pretty sweet and that's kind of it it's like that's that that's kind of yeah. that's kind of like, it's, it's big build up at the end yeah and you know nice happy ending which we don't have a lot of but uh yeah, that's the episode. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, what do we think of this episode, Sean? You, I want to hear your thoughts first. I don't like this episode at all. This is a okay. skipper. Um, really? I, th- I think the message of this episode is very impactful. Uh, it didn't speak to me personally, but I can understand like what they're trying to say. Uh, like the message overall, it's like it's kind of hitting you in the face. Uh, and anyone that can relate to that, I feel like this is really going to stick with you, mm. uh, especially this whole kind of like, I, I'm never good enough. And then mom like kind of needed to hear those words from her daughter that I need you, which is almost like another layer to this whole episode. We didn't even really talk about where mom this whole time, she really just wanted to hear that. And her daughter's been running away from her for six years, if not longer. Uh, so it kind of has a lot of like layers, honestly. So I'm kind of shocked I don't like this one because of all that. And even the supernatural elements, I think, are played really well. I just, I don't know, maybe on a rewatch, I'll have a total flip of opinion on this. I just, for some reason, the acting, uh, talking about it more, maybe I was overthinking it at the time. I just felt like it was really too over the top. Um, But maybe that's just, as I was in the moment thinking about it, as we're talking, I kind of don't exactly feel the same. But at the time, I was like, whoa, this woman's screaming, running out of the room. Maybe it is the appropriate reaction to what's happening to her. But I was just like, okay, this is a bit much. Uh, There's a lot to chew on in this one. And maybe I didn't chew enough off. Maybe I was just like, all right, I want to get to the next one. This didn't do it for me. But it's hard to just, even though I just am contradicting myself now, but maybe this isn't a skipper, but for me it is. If that makes any in your, sense. In your opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's still yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those rare cases where I think it's a good episode, but it didn't work for me. And that's why I'm skipping it, I guess, sure. is what I'm trying to say. But I recommend this one. Yeah. Just for Sean, I'm like, ah, one and done. Yeah. yeah. And like, there's a lot of episodes like that where it's like, you can appreciate them as like decently writ, you know, acted well and everything. But then it's like, if it doesn't speak to you personally, it's like, that's you just don't like it. I there's guess no, that's, fine. that's what it is. There's yeah. no connection for you. And yeah. that's fine. That happens. Right. And it's like this one for me, it's like the way it starts, it's like, you know, a woman comes home to, you know, reunite with her estranged mother right there. I'm like, I'm good. I don't know if this is going to be for me. Yeah. Just too much drama for me. Not enough like spooky atmosphere and just weird stuff happening. But the more that this episode progresses, the more I like it. Mm. By the end of it, I'm like, this is better than I expected. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it does take a while to get in there. And I think there's a little... It's a little hokey, especially in that, mm. you know, the kitchen scene with the, you know, her friend where it's like, remember we were chili? It's like <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's like, that's where it sort of like loses me a bit. And I'm like, what did, I'm like, did I just skip this? <laughs> but as we get into like, once the little girl's introduced, mm-hmm. then I'm like, all right, we get the spooky atmosphere. We get all the weirdness going on, you know, the wind blowing and everything, all, you know, special effects and all that. Yeah. It's like, cool, here we go. But it's like. It almost gets where I want it to go and like gets weird enough. And it's, it is a, you know, nice little spooky episode, but, um, kind of same thing. It's like, it doesn't get all the way there, but then it's, then again, on the other hand, it's like, they can only do so much right. in the time that they have, the budget that they have. I was just going to say like, that. Yeah. They're not going to be perfect episodes. Yeah. But with that said, it's like, I can appreciate what it does. And it's like my favorite ones are the atmospheric ones. Mm-hmm. I consider this to be one of those. Mm. So I like it. Yeah, and, and I'll agree with you. It, it's almost this one for me is almost in the same vein as like the new man, yeah, type of deal. I could see that, yeah, um, like similar kind of style to them or or aesthetic, yeah, yeah, where it's like a more like a psychologically driven uh type uh horror, you know, yeah. or thriller rather. I'm just gonna flip what you said. I think they, I think they nail what they're looking to do in the amount of time that they have because it's all it's so finite and there's a lot of layers to this which. 
you know, even though some of it's a little hand fisted, I think it kind of has to be just to get there. You know True, what I mean? Yeah. Like Tony is used as a device just to get the story shit out. Yeah, like I haven't the, seen you in a while. Let's yeah. catch up. Kind By of the way, your person. mom's been in your room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of that. But then it's also like a little bit more personal because like mom knows why Christine is there, but Tony doesn't know she's there. Yeah. Why are you here? Oh, well, I lost my boyfriend and I'm out of doors and all that yeah, shit. Yeah. And then, of course, Chuck is there to kind of solidify the other stuff that we've been talking about and more a little bit of the inside relationship between her and her mother without them kind of doing it. Right. Right. And those things kind of need to be there, especially for a 22 minute runtime, you know, but I love this episode because I guess I'm going to kind of echo what you say a little bit. Um, I, I like when they take very real problems and I mean, that's my, that's what I love about all types of horror, um, is when they take real problems that we have, or things that can be personified into monsters or supernatural mm-hmm. things, and kind of uh, put you know put that that twist on them. Give that little that nice little spark. Yeah, to it. Yep. because like they literally personified the void between her and her mother, and replaced it with this spectral entity of her as a little girl. Yeah, which I think is fucking great. And then you add the whole element of like. The, the poltergeist kind of activity that comes along with that, which is kind of cool. And again, like I said before, I think the budget, I think it really works for this one because all the budget was used for all those like special things. It's not necessarily a monster, but like the windows breaking, the fan yeah. blowing all the yeah. shit all over the place, all the stuff flying all over. I think it, I think it, it there's something, um, very kinetic and raw about it, especially when she's like screaming at the end and when she's screaming at herself in the mirror and then breaking the mirror, that's like such a powerful scene for me. Um, I really like this one a lot and I think uh, it hits what it needs to needs to do. And, and aside from being a, uh, a drama driven episode, it's got that good balance of drama and uh, uh, supernatural horror to it. Anyway. Yeah. And it's like some of the best episodes we have here, like always do come like backloaded with like a message. Mm -hmm. And in this one, it's like, it's telling the story of like, you know, letting go Mm -hmm. and like confronting your past or like moving on from the past. And being able to actually do that. Yeah. Which a lot of people don't get the chance to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's like her, just the shot of her throwing the, you know, breaking the mirror with herself in the reflection. It's like, there you go. There's like your shot right there. It's, it was like, gr- it's great. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's also, again, like the mom also moving on. I mean, it's a little bit different of a, of a path she has to go mm-hmm. on, but it's actually both characters, mostly the daughter, but there's that little nugget by the end of that. Okay, mom's also now moving on. And we don't even find out what that accident was, I mean, other than she had a mental breakdown, did... Did dad was dad's death involved with that? Am I overthinking be. it again, Sean? Right. Sean, stop overthinking these fucking episodes. Just watch them. No, no but like, that's it, a good point to yeah, bring yeah, up. Yeah. yeah, it's like a Friday, like new blood sort of situation. Yeah, she has like psychic maybe, powers. Yeah. yeah. And drop that in the well, lake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Well, just to your point, when she reads that diary entry, she says, Mom bought me a new dress, but we're not, it was very expensive, but we're not going to tell Daddy. So right, you there could know, have been yeah. a divorce or he could have passed away yeah. or who knows what happened. A lot of implied stuff, in which yeah. I think is exactly what they're going for because they want people that are going to relate to this kind of fill. I mean, you're talking about filling holes in a different sense, but also people just kind of like putting themselves in the character shoes, like through those little uh, story branches. So <laughs> even though, like I said, I didn't like it. I'm even saying possibly skip it. <laughs> I, I did say earlier that it's kind of genius at the same time. So it's very well put together overall. There's little nuggets all over the place. And if you watch it a few times, which what you said before, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe watch it again and see how you feel about I, it. I mean, it's it's happened on this show in the past, yeah. rewatching episodes, having a different opinion, and the same for movies in general. So I wouldn't be shocked to revisit this in a year and be like, huh, actually I do like it, but you never know. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, uh, Chris, you got some Midnight Madness shows coming up, yeah? Yeah, got some more uh, Midnight Madness coming up. So uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram on tape underscore hell, and you see uh, what I'm up to at Midnight Madness. We got uh, a lot of stuff coming up, so uh, see what the next show is, and uh, yeah, hope you can make it out. Absolutely, man, and you're not going to want to miss this show. On Saturday, March 30th at 10 p.m., we have the one-year anniversary of Midnight Madness. So come on down and celebrate with The Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Suspiria, and Inferno. Mix and match your favorite movies. Do an Evil Dead 2 double feature. Do two of the mothers. Or do an Evil Dead and Inferno and a Suspiria and Evil Dead 2. I mean, you could do whatever you want. It's going to be an absolute blast. And congratulations again, Chris, for celebrating your one year of Midnight Madness. And here's to a ton of more awesome shows. We'll see you there. Yeah, so that's The Shrine. Um, Let us know what you think about this episode in the comments. Um, And if you can like and share the
share this video, we'd really appreciate it. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, do us a favor, leave a five-star review because it really helps the show. Uh, but until next time, I'm Joel Escola. Yeah, I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Chris Barr. Tales from the Dark Side is always there, waiting for us to watch it, waiting for us to hit play. Until next time, try to find it on DVD and watch along with us. <laughs> <laughs>